So this is part one of a two-part video series covering an upper lobectomy um, for a lung cancer case. The uh, case was performed by Mr Joel Dunning as chief surgeon and I was helping assist. Um, I'm James Ackley, finally a medical student. So the first part of the video is just covering the anterior lateral thoracotomy which is going on here. And what you want to do is try and find the fifth rib space. A good way to do this to, is to go down the inferior border of the scapula and make an incision a bit anterior to this. The whole point of this technique is to try and cut through all the tissues to the muscles, but not to actually dissect the muscles. So we're just cutting through some fatty tissue here. And below this there are two large groups of muscles, serratus anterius and latissimus dorsi. The aim of the game here really is what we want to do eventually is retract the skin and elevate it and we want to create two flaps, one superficial and one deep to the latissimus muscles and what that will allow is for us to retract through the muscles later on in the operation to save cutting them. So just in this bit of a clip here we're just using the diaphermy to cut through the fatty sheath of the muscle being careful not to cut it at all. And um, you can actually retract the, the muscle and the skin pretty nicely with your fingers as you can see Mr Dunning here on the right um, and just kind of cauterise off any little vessels you get that bleed through the muscle. So just spending a decent amount of time undermining the muscle here because the more undermining you do earlier on the easier it will be to retract the muscle later on in the operation. Um, the important point here is that there is a risk if you do too much undermining of getting a seroma of the fat. Um, so some surgeons actually put a drain into this space after the operation when they're closing. So this view here is just showing a retracted latissimus and we're just highlighting the anatomical position of the long thoracic nerve which obviously if you accidentally dissect that throughout the operation you'll cause winging of a scapula and we're just cutting serratus anterior in the line of its fibres here in order to give us access to the fifth intercostal space. Good part about this is once you've dissected through and you can see the fifth intercostal space you can actually place your finger through and over the ribs here and you can count from the second rib downwards. Um, to make sure you're in the right spot. So Mr Dunning here is just extending his incision all the way back so we get as much space as we can to be able to uh, retract the ribs when we put retractors in and you can see a nice view of the, of the difference of the angles of the fibres for the external intercostal muscles and the internal intercostal muscles right there. The cool thing you can actually do once you get through the internal intercostal muscles is go through with your finger and you can see the lung poking out underneath there and you want to go through with your finger and use your finger to guide to help dissect the pleura and that'll help against any kind of diathermy burns. And what Mr Dunning's doing now is he's just trying to make the intercostal space as big as possible um, trying to divide fibres as far posterior and anterior as possible. When I was talking to Mr Dunning he said he doesn't worry about hitting the internal mammary artery because he always leaves a bit of pleura at the bottom there so um, you've always got a bit of leeway uh, and you don't want to worry when the ribs are angling upwards that you're going to hit the artery. So just a bit of context for this case, um, on this lady's CT scan which was from a different hospital which is why I couldn't include the images, uh, it looked like she had a strong level of adhesion to the chest wall so initially this is going to be done robotically but then everyone uh, was umming and ahhing about whether it could be done with the high levels of adhesions because it, it makes robotic entry a bit more difficult and then in the second part of the video you'll be able to get through you'll see uh, Mr Dunning was quite upset that we couldn't have used a robot for it. Um, this is a technique which is used in order to preserve the intercostal nerve here, it's called an intercostal strip and what, what he's just doing there is he's just going above the rib a little bit and he's going to cut out a, a chunk of muscle and let it hang down in order to preserve the nerve because if you cut the intercostal nerve you'll be left with lots of post-operative pain which we don't want. So the plan is to try and be as gentle as possible with this um, neurovascular bundle because otherwise if you do this incorrectly and you're using the retractors on the ribs later on 
um, that rib will sit there and be crushed and the nerve will be crushed underneath it by the retractor which will cause immense post-operative pain and it's completely unnecessary um, for patient outcomes. And just there Mr Dunning's going as far back as he can with an angled peristal elevator just to divide the intercostal muscle off the sixth rib and um, leaving a bit of pleura intact right at the back there. Another good thing about keeping the pleura intact at this point is after the operation we tend to put in an intrapleural catheter for pain management post-operatively. So this is the beginnings of the intercostal strip and what we're doing here is you're just trying to hold it as far above the rib as you dare and angling upwards in order to just break the pleura when you get through on the other side and make sure that the nerve stays intact because we do not want to dissect it. Um, just using the forceps there in order to um, give a bit of leeway. And this is arguably the most important part of the operation almost. Um, for the thoracotomy you're just pushing it forward with the forceps there making sure that the nerve is well out of the way because obviously it runs along with the um, there you can just see the nerve there is pointing to it the nerve runs with an artery and vein as well and we're just using the forceps almost as a shield to the diaphragm just in case there's any kind of mishaps um, should the nerve get dissected it's protected by the forceps and what Mr Dunning's doing here which he explained to me was um, he's dissecting the muscle first because if you dissect the muscle first it will come anteriorly and you'll be able to see the nerve much better which reduces your risk of hitting it and causing any kind of damage. So originally when putting in this home seller's retractor we were actually only putting it on the underside of the sixth rib initially and putting the uh, contralateral side on the soft tissue and what we're slowly going to do is we're going to slowly ease it a little bit at a time in order to relax the ribs a bit because if you clunk it apart you risk uh, damaging the ribs. One of the best parts about this procedure is towards the end when you're closing up you don't need to do anything fancy you just let the let the intercostal strip hang down uh, you don't need to suture it back together or anything and you just throughout the entire operation let it hang in the groove of the retractor so that it's not getting crushed and that's the best way to preserve the nerve when you're finishing the operation is just to leave it hanging Another important point to make with this intercostal strip as well is to dissect it as far back posteriorly as you can because the retractors are actually going to be pushed very far posteriorly. So it's no good, it's no good doing a really good job um, and let it hang in the anterior part when the retractors are actually far back in the posterior aspect crushing the nerve. So hopefully this has been a bit informative for doing an anterolateral thoracotomy in an elective setting. Um, the intercostal strip was a point that Mr Dunning really wanted to stress. Is it only takes a few extra minutes but is really important in terms of post-operative pain. It's been proven in multiple randomised control trials in order to help the patients with the pain and it can be done uh, relatively simply. Obviously I sped up the video but it, was, it wasn't too bad. Um, Hopefully you'll want to watch the second part of the video where we actually take the lung cancer out.